Good morning, beautiful people. It is Friday and I am getting ready to go and meet Lindsay and we are going to do a few hours of gravel again. I am so stoked. I am wearing my new limited edition Rafa Cycling Club kit designed by my favorite cyclist, Lachlan Morton. It is the Soundwave collection. I will show it to you better in the light. It is absolutely beautiful and it's a work of art. I could not be more stoked with it. The second I saw it, I was like, shitching. These are the advantages of belonging to the Rafa Cycling Club because you get early access to all of the limited edition kits designed specifically for the cycling club. So, yes, gorgeous bibs. I have a short sleeve on. I have my base layer as well as my long sleeve. So let's eat some toast and get out there. Here we go, baby. <laughs> momentarily we are both it's 37 out and we both are having like severe pain in our fingertips so we're gonna run up to the store and see if we can buy some oven mitts or something <laughs> you okay Lynn? <laughs> it, it freaking hurts so bad like has this happened to you give us give us some hacks <laughs>
Lindsay and I have spent a good amount of time sessioning uh, a few obstacles. My glasses are falling off. Uh, taking time to session a few like technical bits on this course. Um, one of them is this huge pipe. It's like, geez, it's probably like a two and a half foot, three foot drop, or you can bunny hop off up it. I've never done it on my gravel bike. I've done it on my mountain bike, but man, it's just like my, my, uh, my nemesis. Uh, I tried to slow roll it, which is totally a mistake. And I fell into some blackberry bushes, but you know what? Like, you just, uh, you just gotta keep trying. You just gotta keep trying. What's your hardest obstacle you've ever had to session and achieved? I wanna hear about some gnarly rides. Give us some confidence. But overall, man, this is such a great ride today. It's a beautiful day and I feel freaking blessed to be out here with Lindsay. It's just like, man, I believe in magic. And there's a, I just rolled through some dog doodles. Some doodly doodles. Yeah. morning it is the next day I just spent an hour and a half ripping my house apart looking for my cycling computer and it appears as though I have lost it so not my favorite thing you guys not my most favorite thing and I don't know about you but lately I feel like every time I blink I'm hemorrhaging more and more money but you know man you just gotta let these things go I can't I cannot think for the life of me what happened other than maybe it flew off my bike while I was driving or I took it off after I put in or after I brought in my bike to the shop to have my derailleur hanger adjusted I don't know so I contacted my rep over at Hammerhead to see if I can buy a new one and have it expedited here because that thing is my life. I hate to be super reliant on technology, but man, that cycling computer, like from building routes on it and I follow it, especially when you're riding off road, it's like the most helpful thing. So moving forward, we are just gonna enjoy our day. And I thought I'd take you with me. I'm gonna head to the gym for a strength strength training session and yeah you can just follow me on a regular day when i'm not biking right now i am making a protein shake my favorite protein powder that i have found that does not upset my gut is by Kachava. i have a subscription to them i love the chocolate so it is 100 percent plant-based with omega-3 from chia and flax it has a ton of anti antioxidant eh antioxidants and adaptogens in it. It's got servings of greens and veggies and probiotics and all that good stuff and 25 grams of protein. So it's also not a low carbohydrate protein. Um, I am not a low carb person seeing as how I'm a cyclist and I lift and I need carbohydrates in order to heal. But um, yeah, we're gonna make a little protein shake. I do two scoops of that with eight ounces of soy milk, some water, some ice cubes, and a banana, and we're gonna smash that and head to the gym. So, come along. Let's try to turn this day around. My cycling computer, you guys. to the gym I have been going back to the gym I would say for about three months now for a while obviously because of COVID gyms were shut down and then for a while it was like a little bit sketchy so um, in that period of time I really noticed 
a difference in my cycling. A lot of people say like, oh, you wanna get better at your bike? Just ride your bike. Now, where that is true, you will improve if you continue to ride your bike. However, there is such a thing for me as overtraining where if you continue to do the same thing, you will get strong in some areas, but also inadvertently get weak in others. And where I noticed a huge change was just kind of my lack of strength. I also, genetically, I'm a very tall, lean person, and I certainly noticed that I was almost getting to a point where I was too lean. Um, People certainly let me know on Instagram anytime I appear thin. It's just like my favorite thing. But, um, correct, uh, genetically I do have a super lean ectomorph physique. I'm very tall, I'm very flexible. It's harder for me to put muscle on my body. So incorporating lifting into my training regimen is pretty essential for me to continue to grow and I want to put out watts, I want to have muscular endurance and I also want to have that extra strength. So right now I'm doing about two times a week I hit legs and glutes and then one time a week I do um, strength training with my arms and my back and my core. I always try to do a little bit of core because that's you know critical for not only cycling but life. But um, yeah, if it's not too busy at the gym, I'll try to capture some of my routine, be that weird person with a camera, like, <laughs> influencer life, <laughs> douche canoe. But uh, yeah, let's hit the gym and I'll try to show you a little bit of my session. Let's go, come along. Different, just the seven seas. I deal with life different, make that limit squeeze. Went off with my style and identity. Better bounce back and get the cheddar cheese. I guess that's why they envy me. On track, now we going way up. Double use is easy as a layup. Working late, stay up. I got his, his band like I'm Barry Bonds. Running through the money, but the money's long. I don't love it, but I need to keep it coming on. Alrighty, I just got back from the gym and I stopped by the grocery store. I, man, there was a lot of people at the gym. But uh, I wasn't able to do everything that I wanted because there was like 50 bajillion people over at the free weights. So I was able to do the leg press machine, as you saw. Um, I did my quads, my hamstrings, my glutes, um, using some of the machines that I really like. And I'll probably do some squats at home with my dumbbell, some sumo squats and stuff. I'll try to get that, um, footage for ya. But, uh, man, me losing my cycling computer, that was, like, weighing on me. So I'm gonna try to turn the day around and make some food because cooking always makes me feel better certainly does. So I ran by the grocery store and I got everything to make one of my most favorite lentil soups. It's something that can be put on top of brown rice. I usually make a big batch at the beginning of the week. Um, I make food in batches, large quantities, so that I always have something ready to eat. So I will go ahead and show you how I make that. And um, really delicious. Let me know if you have any questions. What are your favorite meals that you like to make in bulk? Or what do you like to eat during the week? I'd love to have some dialogue about food. Let's talk food, baby. All right, darlings, this is basically everything that you are going to need for the soup. I use a scant fourth cup of extra virgin olive oil. There's a whole onion in here. There are four carrots, some garlic. As far as herbs go, I have a half a teaspoon of curry powder, a, excuse me, a teaspoon of curry powder, a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. I have a 28 ounce 
uh, can of tomatoes, one cup of brown or green lentils, I'm using green today, and I just rinsed those, um, four cups of vegetable broth, as well as some water, um, and some salt, pepper, and red chili flake, and then some kale and fresh lemon to top it off with. I also deglaze my, my uh, pan after I've sauteed my carrots and my onions with a little bit of white wine, because why not? And I think it adds a really beautiful richness to this soup. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, we are going to dice up a yellow onion. Any color onion will do. Uh, my stepmom taught me a trick a few years ago. If you look, you cut the onion in half, make sure you peel off the, the peel, the rind, I don't know what the appropriate term is. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna create horizontal slices, or vertical, depending on what way. And you're leaving about a half an inch little nub at the ends where you can hold on to. And then you wanna protect your little fingers and then go along and this will give you a perfect dice every time. Yeah, so this cooking with Aaron, cooking with Aaron. Alrighty, darlings. So I have sauteed my onion and carrot on high medium heat here for about five minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my herbs. Mm, it smells so good. So again, I have cumin, I have um, thyme, I have a little bit of curry powder, some red chili cake, and some bay leaves. So I'm gonna add that. I'm also going to add my four cloves of garlic. And we're gonna stir that in just for about 30 seconds. Okay. So after I add that, I'm gonna add my white wine. And I'm gonna allow that to simmer here for about I'd say five minutes or so, and then I will start adding the rest of our ingredients. Alrighty, so I have added my 28 ounce can of tomatoes to the deglazed onions and carrots and herbs with wine, and that's been simmering for about a minute or so. So now I'm going to add my cup of rinsed lentils. Sometimes it gets stuck to the bottom, so I will take my little bit of broth just to help get that off there. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna add, this contains four cups of low sodium vegetable broth. I like this Imagine brand, but any brand will do. I've also used the vegan no chicken stock before, which is also really nice. And also two cups of water. Alrighty, so I'm gonna stir this around. So I've turned up the heat to high, and what we want to do is we want this to boil, and once it boils, we're gonna reduce it, cover it partially with the lid, and allow it to cook for 30 minutes. But I do wanna add my teaspoon of fresh sea salt, and I'm also going to add a liberal amount of fresh cracked pepper. I love fresh cracked pepper. So we're gonna add that and wait for this to return to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and simmer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes! I mean, mmm, it smells so good. I can't wait. This is such a nice thing to make on Sundays, like a little gift you can give to yourself with some brown rice and crusty, yummy bread. It's like, you're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. Alrighty, so our soup is all done cooking. I have tested the lentils to make sure that they are cooked through. They are, so I pulled them off of the heat. Now, this is not a must do with the whole process, but I like doing this because it makes the soup a little bit creamier and the broth a little bit robust and thick. So I take my immersion blender and I put it into the soup and I just pulse it a few times. You can also, if you don't have an immersion blender, you can take half of it uh, like a cup out and put it into a blender and blend it and then re-add it to the soup. But I'm just gonna put the immersion blender in and pulse it for a couple seconds um, just to puree some of it. I still like a pretty chunky soup. All right, so we're gonna put her in there. Let's see, I think that's pretty good. I still, again, I like a pretty chunky soup. That's good. Alrighty, so after that, we're not gonna rip it on the floor. So, so after that, I have these beautiful lemons from one of my client's tree. I'm gonna start with half a lemon. I do love adding lemon to everything, but we're just gonna start with half a lemon and then we'll taste and adjust. 
You always want to make sure that your lentils are cooked all the way before adding citrus because citrus will stop your lentils from cooking. All right, then we're going to add a bunch of kale. I'm using baby kale today. You can add any kind of green you want. I'm using kale today. You can use spinach, you can use frozen spinach even if you want, but I like fresh greens. So after you put that in there, you're gonna stir it kind of all together, and then you're gonna make sure that you're covering all of that. I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes off the heat just while the greens soften. Um, I'm gonna let it kind of all sit here while it cools off a little. You can add any salt if you feel like it needs more salt, but that is the soup, so I'll take a little look-see. That's what the finished soup looks like. So yeah, just what, the, just what the doctor ordered. So that's my super simple lentil soup recipe that I make once or twice a week. Yeah. Alrighty, I am ready to enjoy my soup with a beautiful piece of French bread and I'm gonna get to organizing my room. Thank you so much for watching this vlog and let me know if you have any more questions on what I eat. I certainly will have something else to eat today, probably some cereal, granola, I don't know. I like food. Or I'll have some more soup with rice and veggies. Um, happy, happy cycling and happy eating. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It super supports my new channel. And let me know if you have any questions. I'd also love to hear what are your favorite meals? Do you like cooking? Is there anything that you would like to know more about my diet? And uh, happy writing. Happy writing, happy living. Thank you. We've also been leaving shreds of clothing along the trail like Hansel and Gretel so we can get back to the car. That's Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah. No, yes. Mm, it is beautiful out today though. Gorgina.